A famous former atheist, Ion Hirsiani, has converted to Christianity. The Holy Synod of the Orthodox Church in America issues a statement on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Finally, more and more canonical churches are being closed in Ukraine by their government. We will talk about all this in today's episode of The Orthodox View. I am your host, Philip Champion. The Richard Dawkins Prize winner and a well-known atheist, Ayan Hirsiali, has converted to Christianity. The reasons for her conversion, however, are mostly rational rather than spiritual. She believes that atheism cannot prepare the West for a civilizational war that's coming. Here's what she said. In this nihilistic vacuum, the challenge before us becomes civilizational. We cannot withstand China, Russia and Iran if we can't explain to our populations why it matters that we do. We cannot fight woke ideology if we can defend the civilization that it is determined to destroy. And we cannot counter Islamism with purely secular tools. To win the hearts and minds of Muslims here in the West, we have to offer them something more than videos on TikTok. At the same time, not everyone has found such grounds for conversion reasonable. Some authors have accused Hirsi Ali of hypocrisy, saying that she became a Christian for political and civilizational reasons, rather than because of her faith in Christ. And that is simply not right. But a famous Orthodox writer and journalist, Rod Dreher, has come to Hirsi Ali's defense. In his article written for the European Conservative, he at first admits that Hirsi Ali's critics have a point from a theological perspective. In the end, he writes, the incense, the cathedrals, the great art, the humanitarianism, all of these things are epiphenomena of true belief that Jesus is the Messiah. They are signs pointing the way to conversion and what we Orthodox Christians call theosis, ultimate union with God. They are the map, but not the territory. On the other hand, Rod Dreher calls Hirsiali's critics ungracious. Here are his points. Christian intellectuals who call out Hirsi Ali's instrumentalist Christianity may mean well, but they're making a serious mistake. For one, they lack charity. It is an astonishing thing to see a woman who renounced the idea of God because of the cruel and insane treatment she received from Muslims and who turned herself into a prophet of atheism now publicly attest to being a follower of Jesus Christ. More importantly, these critics misunderstand the nature of religious conversion. For many of us, conversion is a process, a pilgrim's road that leads us to a moment of decision. In my case, it took eight years until I could admit, without hesitation, that Jesus was Lord. Hirsiali has chosen what she has every reason to believe is, in worldly terms, the losing side. We who believe in Christ more conventionally should be there to help her along the road, not tear her down for perceived shortcomings. Thus, according to Rod Dreher, it is unfair to accuse Hirsi Ali of hypocrisy because she may only be in the beginning of her spiritual path. And perhaps that is truly so. On behalf of the Orthodox view, we can only wish Ayan Hirsi Ali God's aid on her spiritual journey. Hopefully, she shall see that Christianity is first and foremost a spiritual worldview based on the person of Jesus Christ and not a political or a civilizational ideology. Feel free to share your thoughts on Hirsi Ali's conversion in the comments section below. The Holy Synod of the Orthodox Church in America has issued a statement on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, calling on the clergy and the faithful to offer fervent prayers for peace especially during the upcoming season of the Nativity Fast. In particular, the statement reads that every human life is incalculably precious. Each human person is a soul for whom Christ died. As violence sweeps the world and conflicts in Israel and Palestine claim ever more victims, we mourn for the destruction of human life and well-being, plead with the relevant authorities for an immediate cessation of hostilities 
and call for meaningful dialogue between the contestant parties. The statement was issued on the second day following the decision of the patriarchs and heads of the churches in Jerusalem to cancel this year's Christmas festive activities, in solidarity with all innocent victims of the current Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We shall put a link to that statement in the description of our video. More canonical Orthodox churches have unfortunately been closed in Ukraine. OrthoChristian reports that after examining 18 objects of the state-owned ancient Chernigov National Architectural and Historical Preserve, including several churches and monasteries, the Ministry of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine has decided to close the Orthodox churches but leave the schismatic churches open. The faithful are thus cut off from the relics of several saints that are housed in the Chernigov churches. According to the ministry, the holy sites used by the Ukrainian Orthodox Church are in unsatisfactory condition and require renovations and conservation work. The commission also recommended that the houses of worship belonging to the canonical church should become museums. On the other hand, the commission assessed the condition of the sites used by the state-created Orthodox Church of Ukraine as satisfactory. However, the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church notes that there are obvious flaws in the preservation of the churches used by the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, but the state didn't seal them, once again proving that their ultimate goal is to fight against the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Wonderful news from the African continent. On the 12th of November, the 23rd week after the Holy Pentecost, a divine liturgy was celebrated at the parish of the Holy Great Prince Vladimir, equal of the Apostles, in the village of Kaptenjin in Kenya, Vihiga County. The divine service was led by a priest, John Matsotsa. On the same day, Father John had baptized two young Kenyans from the village. We congratulate our newly baptized brothers from the village of Kaptenje and wish them God's help on their spiritual journeys. Meanwhile, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox Vehicle.